Hi there, come on in. I'm Fred Trost. You're watching The Practical Sportsman. It is Thursday night, December 14th, the year 2000. On the heels of Big Buck Night, we have had one severe blizzard. Which reminds me of a trip we took back in 1994. Another year of a lot of snow and blizzards. We're going to take you across to Canada on an ice fishing snowmobile adventure. We're going to give you a great recipe for Cajun trout. We have a trophy story from a woman hunter about bear hunting that is just great and the tale of the hatchet fish. All this coming up, so stay tuned. What beauty. 40 miles north of Thessalon, riding snowmobile trails on power line crossings back to remote trout lakes. This was my first snowmobile ice fishing trip. With a foot or two of snow on the trails and mild temperatures, the conditions in March of 1993 were perfect for snowmobiling in Canada and for ice fishing for Canadian lake trout. Now, once you got there, the fishing techniques were simple. Now, this is not a big one. Oh, it's a little bigger than the last one, though. Get out of there. Whoa! Keep out of that hole. How about that? Well, it was in March of 1993 when John Ford and I got bitten by the snowmobile bug. Not so much for riding, but for the places a snowmobile can take you in the dead of winter. Places where peace, solitude, and quiet blanket the northern woodlands. We couldn't wait to come back this year, but the winter of 1994 was totally different. And we expected cold, but not 30 below. And we expected snow, but not three feet of it. Nevertheless, Doug Tabor of our practical sportsman staff pulled together a group of over two dozen anglers for a late January adventure to some lakes way back in the boonies where lake trout and rainbows and brook trout can be caught in good numbers. Now, despite the fact that we were fishing some remote, out-of-the-way places, minutes after we arrived in this bay, we were greeted by a Canadian CO. How you doing? Good. It's freezing, eh? Yes, are you the conservation officer lady? Yes, I am. Cool. Sir? Cool. Do you have your license on you? Sure. Okay, I'll have a look at those foods. Any How chance you of frisking me? Hey, no. You're just starting, eh? Cold. I know, I know. It's only, what, 22 below? Isn't that nice? It's mild. <laughs> well, this amounts to a virtual strip search. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. You know, there's... Sorry, but if I no, don't bother I, you, know, you now, I'll bother you You know, hour. if I would have thought about it, I could have put my license on the outside pocket. Helps. <laughs> Here we go. There they are. That's mine and his. Okay, you got them together, right? Yeah. You take a picture of them. Oh, it's still okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. What do you find, though? What do you thank mainly you. just license violations? Or? Um, on this lake, too yeah. many lines usually. Uh -huh. You only allow two lines per person, right? Now, with temperatures way below freezing, it was tough to fish with more than one line, but we did see some local Canadians using tip-ups. Holes would freeze up, your hands would freeze up if you weren't careful. In fact, just breathing would give you a lip full of ice if you had a mustache. Welcome to Lake Wakamata. John just told me to get the ice off my mustache. You see, it's 20 below zero right now. We have a, a group of people here. In fact, this is mainly the fishermen we have on our snowmobile trip have come to this bay because there's no slush. You can see here, this is solid ice. This is great. I mean, this is normal ice fishing conditions. However, many of the lakes up here have a lot of snow on them. There's not quite as much snow right here as there are on the, in the other areas because of the, the wind. But there's a lot of snow on this ice, and it's created slush. In fact, yesterday, talk about a miserable experience. We tried to fish brook trout. Take a look at this. This is all the tape we got. This is the great northern Canadian adventure, ice fishing and snowmobiling. You see that trail right through there? That's where a bunch of us got stuck. We're standing knee deep in snow, slush. Look at these fine fellows. Look at the smiles on their faces. Yes, They're having fun. Doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> I tell you, this is, this is slush. I'm going to go over here. I have a special, special spot where I'm going to fish. I created a little fishing platform here out of slush, so it's fairly uh, stable. And then I kick this area out, and I'm drilling my hole. This is what you call 
a cluster adventure <laughs> or a cluster trip. <laughs> and look at these guys. John, pan over those guys. These are the instigators. Yeah. Oh. This is great conditioning for tendonitis. There we go. There we go. Oh, I can feel the fish down here. I can bump them with the auger. Talk about an experience. Nobody caught any fish. It was miserable. We got all soaking wet. That's why we didn't get any camera work yesterday, but it was warm. I mean, it was 25 degrees or so. Now it's 45 degrees less than it was yesterday. So I'm gonna get my hole through the ice here so we can catch some fish. I drilled a hole through two feet of ice while Doug Tabor fished nearby. Doug was working his rods while one of our guides, Bob McGuire, had a fish on. Have you set it already? Yeah, I set the hook. But I haven't come to my marker for matching that. Uh-huh. There it is there. How much further? I got my other, I got my jigging line hooked here too. Oh, okay. So you kind of screwed up, huh? No, just leave it. We'll get it after. Nah, no, it's not a real big fish. He's a decent fish. Where's he at? Uh, he'll be coming here shortly. That don't fight much, huh? Well, sometimes they're hooked pretty deep, eh? There, he's coming here now. Oh, he's not a bad one. I lost him. You lost him? Oh, he's on your pole. He's on this pole now. <sighs> wait, 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 don't pull your little rod in. Oh, no, it's not. Lost him right at the hole here. Nope, leave that there. Oh, no. Yeah, lost him right at the ice. Well, we got to I'm see him. two pounds. Yeah, we got to see him for a second on the camera. <laughs> well, there'll be another one along here shortly, I would think. Well. They're starting to hit here. We're getting a few taps all around us now, eh? Yeah. Well, we'll have to try again. That's all we can say, eh? Is this about normal for fishing this time of year, or do you generally get more action? Oh, a lot more action. I don't know what it is. Pressure or full moons out and stuff like that, so. Oh, really? That's all I can think is a problem anyway, so. What do the guys jig with here? Uh, mostly Swedish pimples. Uh, Abacosters. Color make any difference or not really? I prefer chartreuse green. Uh, sometimes sucker bait attached to it. Different times of the year it's different, eh? This next fish was a challenge. What do you think? We got any movement? Yeah, it's turning, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. A fish was on this tip-up line, but for some reason, these trout were very finicky feeders, and this one dropped the bait. Yeah. Oh, missed him. Boy, he was sure running with it for a second. Got him? Yep. Oh, I lost my hand. He's just grabbing onto it and then letting go, huh? A few seconds later, this local angler set the hook again. I got her set that time. You got her? I think I got him this time. Not very big. Today, we were fishing in a bay that was protected from the wind. Now, that kept the snow down. At least it wasn't drifting into this part of the lake. There was no slush, so it was easier to fish, and our snowmobiles didn't get stuck. And the sunshine made for some nice videotaping. Coming up too easy for liquor. Good job. 
This guy wasn't in our party. He was a Canadian local who had a golden touch for setting the hook. How many does that make today? First one. First one? Yeah. These are the Canadian lake trout we were after. Up in this part of Ontario, trout are the most favorite fish. Speckled or brook trout seem to be the most favorite. Lake trout like this are the bread and butter of these lakes, though. The locals say you can catch ones this size all the time. Well, I didn't rub that fact into Doug Tabor. He wasn't catching them all the time, but neither was I. Now, I don't consider myself a wimp. But in weather like this, I do like to get around, move, talk to the fashionable dressers. <laughs> but one of my favorite activities, now they kid me about it, but I'm big on building a fire, maybe cooking something for lunch. Now, the highlight of the afternoon. Oh, yeah. Welcome to Bodke's Restaurant. <laughs> There's the appetizer, entree, meal, everything in one, the tube steak. Good old tube steak. When the mercury is 20 below, it's a real pleasure to huddle around the fire as those warm flames cook that doggy. Now, this may have been the ultimate in simple meals, but it hit the spot. Meanwhile, back out on Waccamata Lake, the hardcore, or should I say cold core anglers, were busy. There's a hatchet on the end of this. There's going to be some. Are you fighting? Yeah, it's down there. Be yeah. careful when you get them to the edge of the ice here. Yeah, all right. A little something. That was Dr. Scott Aldridge from Drummond Island. Good job. How's that oh, feel? Yeah. A little bit I more think you, I think you've seen him a couple times today, but I haven't got him up. <laughs> he finally did a good job. They get bigger than this? Yep, a lot bigger. <laughs> OK. Well, well, we'll hang on and hope that we see something. Oh, that's a good one, huh? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Woo! <laughs> good job. Oh. How'd that one hit? That one hit hard. Did that it? one hit hard. I knew that one was there. Definitely knew that one was that's there. That's Darren Beatty from Auburn Hills. He caught three lake trout on the trip, including this one, the biggest. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. First one, huh? First one today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First one today. So what's the story? It's, I told you, right hand, then left hand, and then right hand again. Uh-huh. You know? And, uh, so you're fishing two rods? No, just one. Just one? Just switching it back and forth. I just got here 10 minutes ago. How come these other guys can't catch it? I don't know, but I'm going to put this one back. What? I'm going to put it back. Put it back where? In the hole. Why? Don't you dare. Why? Because we need to eat. Well, you want to eat it tonight? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, we didn't eat it. Darren decided to have it mounted, but a fox stole it during the night. And that's the truth. Even the foxes were hunting around the cabins in this weather. But inside, we managed to stay warm using wood heat. The dining room was always warm with hot food, tall tails. Well, lots of hot air is what I'm trying to say. This is our practical sportsman group of Michigan anglers that Can-Am Adventures guided from Drummond Island across the frozen bay to lakes northeast of Thessalon. The lure was fishing, but the snowmobiling was great. This is the practical sportsman, make no doubt about it. But every now and then, we have to take a few liberties. Uh, Doug Tabor and I, this is Doug Tabor, right here. We have found a new joy besides going ice fishing on snowmobiles. We have found, you've heard of the Blue Angels. We are the Skidoo Angels. <laughs> huh, Doug? This is just having fun. This is having fun. <laughs> do not try this at home, kids. But it's something that we found that we can do in this powdery snow out here that is an absolute riot. Let's go, Mr. Skidoo Angel.
snowmobiling and ice fishing. That's just about all we found to do two weekends ago in the Arctic cold. But, you know, these two activities, when it's 30 below, makes the outdoors a great place to be. Ah, the, the magic of videotape and music. It makes it seem like just a warm, comfortable, carefree time on the snowmobiles. But I tell you, it was cold. When the temperature was below zero, we were freezing. The slush on the ice, uh, you didn't see where we got stuck with the snowmobiles. John Ford and I didn't even feel like getting the camera out. It was so miserable. One of those times you just pray for a helicopter. Please come in and take me out of this. But when things firmed up, I tell you, we got into some good action. It was a lot of fun. And that's one thing you can do in a winter. If we have a lot of snow, get, it, get out there and do that. Uh, now, I said, coming up, we're going to have a recipe for Cajun trout. Hey, this is a tasty one. This recipe is one that uh, should have a lot of current popularity. It's called Cajun trout. And it was sent to us from, by Marilyn Bird from Rose City, who just happens to be owner of the Rose City Trout Farm, right? Correct. Now... This, this trout, does it have the skin on it? No, it doesn't. Yes. Or it does have the skin yeah. on, the, on the bottom side. Yeah. But the whole recipe is here in the seasoning. And what is in the seasoning, Marilyn? Oh, gosh, you'd have to hand me my recipe. Okay, for I'll hand you the recipe. It's uh, cayenne okay. pepper, garlic, salt. Um, yeah, I use fresh fi fish fillets. Mm -hmm. uh, these were caught this morning, and my husband, Fred, filleted them. And do I read off? It's got cayenne pepper, a tablespoon. A tablespoon of garlic salt, one and a half teaspoons of onion powder, a teaspoon of oregano, and a tablespoon of freshly ground mm. black pepper. I'm going to move that dish off to the side there so we can see what we're eating. Um, dig in, gang. You this, bet. Is, this is great. Well, this is Nancy, your daughter. Yes. And do you work at the trout farm? I used to. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, this is good. And you know what I like? The, the seasonings aren't real hot and it isn't blackened, which sometimes is pretty strong. Yes. Now, someone that likes um, spicy food and perhaps they're cooking for someone that doesn't like it quite so spicy, but you can just add paprika over your, mm -hmm. your butter mm. and uh, to make it more attractive. Good flavor. But, um, the fish can't be fresher than caught this morning. The skin remained real silver. Well, it doesn't take long putting it under the broiler. Mm -hmm. About four minutes or so. Mm -hmm. Four minutes. Well, most people, I think, overcook fish. Absolutely. Don't you? Mm -hmm. Then they, they're dry. And uh, this is moist but flaky. It is done. Nancy did it for me. And it's, it's real light, too. You know, frankly, we've, I've eaten a few recipes today that we've been taping. And I was starting to get full. I'm starting to get hungry again. Mm. Well, thank no, I'm not you. kidding. This is very... That's flattering. <laughs> yeah, it's excellent. You've probably heard it said that if you find your life a little dull, risk it. Well, one way you can make hunting more exciting is to hunt for something that is least perceived to be dangerous, like bears. And it isn't just a man sport either. Uh, some women really take to it. Yeah, this is Michelle Thurmond from Bellevue. She was hunting up an Ontonagon on the 10th of September at 1.36 p.m. in the afternoon. 1.36. How do you know it was 1.36? I looked at my watch. <laughs> uh, you got a bear in front of you. Yeah. Oh, I, had, I had to know exactly what time she came in. What time I shot her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have you hunted bear before? No. Nope. First time. I've gone tracking and baiting and stuff like that because I helped uh, uh, Frank or uh, Don Scott, who owns mm -hmm. Scott Superior Inn. I helped him two years prior to that, and then I got a permit and ah. got my bear. Why? I mean, I want to know what is it about bear hunting that a mama here? Oh, it! I'm hooked. It, thanks to my husband Paul, I'm hooked. hooked it, it was on what? Hunting, period. <laughs> but to, to get a bear, um, I can't describe. How exciting it is. I can't even begin to describe. I could have watched her all day actually, but as I pulled the gun up I thought my dad and my husband will be so proud. <laughs> I said I gotta get her. Um, it's really hard to tell how big how big they are though. Except, well, do you deer hunt? I do, but I have not gotten my deer yet. 
So you're a trophy bear hunter. Now, it says here, you, you have a, a little boy? Little girl. Little girl. Her name's Sierra. Sierra. Well, I just wondered, you know, you came up here, you got the bear, and you said you were in a ground blind and you were baiting. Yes. You didn't. No. Okay. <laughs> Don, Don's wife, Kathy, took care of her for us. She was six months old at the time. Okay. Well, I mean, you didn't, you know, that would be great bait. Well, no. You know, you could. <laughs> I no, don't you. Think, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, put a rope on her, you know, and then pour her back in there. Huh? <laughs> She'd probably go for it, actually. <laughs> There's probably something illegal about that that you can't use live animals oh, yeah. for bait oh, or yeah. something like that, but she's not a lot of little animal. She's a cutie. Thank you. Now, so you want to have your daughter grow up and be a hunter? Oh, yeah. I think she will be. She loves. Is uh, this your first child? Yes. You don't have any teenagers? No, I'm expecting a second in October, so I don't well, know if I'll get my deer. Thank you. I don't know if I'll get my deer this year or not. <laughs> there will come a time when you will stop second guessing what you think the how they're going to turn out. <laughs> but anyway, that that happens like 15, 16 15, years. 15. Okay, old. that's yeah. what everybody says. You remember? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Well, good. Well, Michelle, great story. Thank Congratulations. You. I loved it. Hooked on bear hunting. Can I say one thing to all the women out there who give their husbands and wives a really hard time about hunting? Just give it a try. You'll love it. It is so much fun. That's all I have to say. Well, Don't great. give your husbands and, and uh, boyfriends a hard time anymore. <laughs> Just try it. Well, thank you, Michelle thank you. Thurman. 314-pound bear. I love those trophy tales, especially from a woman who loves bear hunting. Oh, man, a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun at our banquets, and you're going to see a lot of these trophy stories uh, coming up on this show. You're going to also see a lot more recipes, which, by the way, practical recipes. I also love practical jokes. Now, we caught some trout, but we also played a practical joke on Steve Walker, who hadn't caught a trout during the trip the last hour of the last morning I offered to let him use my fishing rod, which had caught fish, and while he wasn't looking, I set him up. He had left his rod to get some coffee, and when he got back, he thought he had a fish. I don't think so. He's coming slow, though. Gee. Is it fighting, shaking his head or anything? Yeah, it was. He's just coming hard. I don't want to pull the hook. Jeez, old Pete. Watch, I you don't even, didn't even have to jig it. No, I just left the set. No kidding. Here he comes. See what it is? Oh, we got here. Oh, jeez. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fred, he's all pe ah! I love it, I love it. You caught a hatchet fish. God, oh, darn it. That's great. Fred, I thought that I you had, had it. you know, I went up, I was going to go up, get that he coffee cup. Got a hatchet. <laughs> <laughs> they do tend that to shake good. their heads. Oh, yeah, now man. tell me about that when it was shaking its head. It was shaking. I <laughs> said it was pulling. I said it may be. I guess I did. <laughs> we'll roll the tape back and you'll see it was shaking oh, its head. Oh, Fred. Is it fighting, shaking its head or anything? Yeah, it was. He's just coming hard. I don't want to pull the hook. Oh, man, you, that was good. You got me. Oh, <laughs> oh. He's you been... wonder why we ice fish? Oh, oh. this is what it's all about. <laughs> well, here what do you want to do now? Do you want to toss this I'm back? I'm going to mount it now. You have it mounted? Yeah, I'm going to mount it. <laughs> it's going up in the restaurant there. Sometime when you're up on Drummond Island, stop by the Bear Track Inn, you'll see that hatchet fish on the wall. Steve Walker has it proudly displayed. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show, and I hope to see you back here next week. How you doing? Good. Freezing, eh? Yes, are you the conservation officer lady? Yes, I am. Cool. Sir? Cool. Do you have your licenses on you? Sure. Okay, I'll have a look at those, please. Any How chance you doing of frisking there? Are you No. You're just starting, eh? Cold. I know, I know. It's only, what, 22 below? Isn't that nice? It's mild. <laughs> well, this amounts to a virtual strip search. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. You know, there's... Sorry, but if I no, don't you know, you now, I'll bother you. You know, if I would have thought about it, I could have put my license on the outside pocket. Helps. <laughs> Here we go.